Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to what is now the sixth Sovereign Nations Conference. We've had conferences in Washington, D.C., in London, in Phoenix twice, in Atlanta. We've had them all over the place, but now we're here in Clearwater, Florida. And one of the reasons that we're having them here is because of the fact that this is my home church. And I want to just thank Countryside Baptist Church, Pastor John Connell as well, Dan and Nick, Olivia and her team for being back here and being able to allow us to make this happen. And I want to tell you, this particular conference will probably be one of the spiciest that we've done, but it's no different than anything that we've done in the past because really our goal has always been at Sovereign Nations is to ensure that authoritarianism doesn't take over. That's my biggest concern. And it's been my biggest concern since 2017 when we started. Well, here's something I want you to remember. Happy is he who is able to know the causes of things and who trampled beneath his feet all fears, inexorable fate, and the roar of devouring hell. That's from the poet Virgil in 50 BC. Because if you understand the causes of things, you'll be able to know how to react and as well to be able to get ahead of things, be able to make sure that you can prevent some really bad things from happening. So we're here to talk about the problem. And so yes, many people refer to this as a red pill speech, but uh, this wasn't something I was originally planning on doing, but it's important, I think, to make sure that we understand what we're up against and what we have to defeat. And as well, we, we want to try to convince others to make sure that we can preserve our nation, that we can preserve the gospel, that we can pre really preserve human liberty and cognitive liberty. Those are things that are very important for us all to make sure that we continue on with. I hope you find those things valuable as well. But you are in the midst of a change from an analog world, a physical, objective world, and into a digital world, a subjective world, a world where truth is made up. Whatever truth may be according to your tribe, according to your faith, in which there's multiplicities of faith, but there is no one true root to understand where we need to be and where we can actually relate to one another. But just think about this for a second. What if you could go back and warn the 2017 you about what's been happening today? What would that look like? So let's just imagine for a second, okay? Go back in your mind. Imagine you had the phone call of you. You had the phone number. You called you and said, hey, 2017 you, look, I know it's the summer of 2017, but this is 2023 you. And I need to tell you about what's happening today. What would 2017 you say? Well, when you, 2023 you, says, look, let's meet at Starbucks, just sit down, we're going to have a cup of coffee, and we just need to talk through what you're going to be going through in the next six years. So you meet them across the street over here at Starbucks. You get a London Fog or a coffee, let's say, for what you like to have. I like London Fog tea. But you sit down and you say, okay, look, I just got to tell you, you got to prepare yourself. And then all of a sudden, their eyes are going, oh, really? <laughs> what is it that you had to tell me? Well, first of all, you tell them, the entire world will be shut down by a virus. The entire thing. I mean, there won't be one speck on earth where you will not be shut down. Maybe Sweden played a little bit of games with it. Maybe Florida will be opening sooner than others. I mean, it'll, it'll open after just shutting everything down for two months and arresting people for going on the beach. Telling people that they can't go to a restaurant. If you have a dying relative that has to go to the hospital, well, you can't go with them because you might be infected too. Because we don't have all the tests yet, you see. And all of a sudden, everywhere that you go on your television set, 2017 you, you're going to have a ticker at the bottom of the television. A ticker at the bottom of every web page that you go to is going to tell you where somebody's caught the virus in Zimbabwe, in Fort Stockton, Texas, in Dunedin, Florida. As a matter of fact, they say there's two people that work at the Publix that got COVID. They have the virus. It's deadly. And so everywhere you're going to see nothing but wall-to-wall -wall coverage for months and months and months and months that you must be afraid. But what's the main thing that you have to be afraid of? One another. You see, you're a threat to me. 
You're a threat to me. Your grandchildren are a threat to you. As Joe Biden would say, what, do you want to go kill grandma? So the entire world's going to be shut down. In 2017, you're going, okay, <laughs> this is science fiction. I saw this movie one time. And then they're going to try and force everyone to get a vaccine, one that really hasn't been really tested that much before. And they're going to tell everybody, if you get the vaccine, then you'll be allowed to participate in society again. In 2017, you's going to go, uh, uh, no, people wouldn't go for that. Oh, no, 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 they will. Because you just spent a year making them fear one another. That's what you did. So 2017 goes, okay, keep on going. That's what you have to say. Well, also, by the way, supply chains will be disrupted all over the world. All of a sudden, you're going to, uh, serious 2017, you, you're going to have baby formula shortages. Are you kidding? We have plenty of factories that can make that stuff. No, no, no. There's going to be shortages. Shortages in labor, shortages in supply, shortages in getting the right chemicals, because everybody's going to be shut down. And not only that, even past when everybody was talking about nothing but COVID, which they're not talking about anymore, by the way, in 2023, but when they're, when they're talking about nothing else but COVID, everything is going to start to be a problem. You can't even, chicken's going to be Hard to get. Good beef, the things that you get in your grocery store, all of a sudden it'd be hard. Bathroom tissue. I mean, 2017 you, I mean, it's like the French knew what they were doing when they had that extra thing. Well, anyway, you know, so all of a sudden everything's going to be disrupted. Our monetary instruments will be threatened. All of a sudden, 2017 you, what's going to happen is they're going to say, look, I'm sorry, but... The dollars and the way that we do things, well, the dollar is getting kind of, I mean, it's devalued right now. And, you know, we really need to start up thinking about central bank digital currencies. 2017, you was, well, look, I got some crypto and so forth. No, no, no. It's worse than that. I mean, the central bank will be able to control every single penny that you have. How you spend it, how you don't spend it. If we have a central bank digital currency that's controlled by Baptists, they'll say, you can't buy alcohol. If you have a central bank digital currency that's controlled by Mormons, you can't get a cup of coffee. If you have a central bank digital currency that somehow is controlled by authoritarian autocrats, well, they're going to tell you what you can eat, where you can go. This is what's going to happen. Oh, 2017, you're going to be saying, nah, that's never going to happen. It's like, oh, you don't understand. In 2020, it really wasn't about COVID. It was about putting everybody through obedience school. So you had freedom and liberty before 2017, you? It's going to be ripped from you. Our ability to travel freely will be threatened. Have you been vaxxed? Have you not been vaxxed? But then all of a sudden it's going to be, well, are you participating in our digital ID system? And you know, as a matter of fact, we need to start thinking about 15-minute cities, and your carbon footprint might be too large. So we have to centralize population again and destroy the suburbs. 2017, he's saying, oh, <laughs> that's never going to happen. By the way, I mean, I just got a 15-year mortgage two years ago on my house right now. You go, oh, you haven't seen the least of it yet. Because in the future, you will own nothing, and you will be happy. Inflation will go through the roof, and you will barely be able to put gas in your car. I mean, your dollar will be devalued, even if you've been saving your whole life. All of a sudden, your savings are going to look like nothing. This is what they're going to do to you, 2017, you. As a matter of fact, you know how President Trump was just elected? See, President Trump will be thrown out of office, censored by social... The President of the United States, the leader of the free world, will be censored by social media, impeached twice, and a dementia-ridden old man will take control of the United States. Twenty seventeen, you looks at you and says, <laughs> um, "Kind of a conspiracy theorist, there, brother. That uh, first of all, not even one of those things would ever happen, and certainly not all of those things would ever happen." So twenty twenty three, you would go, "Just you wait. They're not even done yet with what they're doing. See the thing you don't understand right now, twenty seventeen, you." is you're being put through operational preparation of the environment. It's a military term. They're preparing the environment to you. Hey, 2017 you, did you notice that your Baptist church, your Presbyterian church, that they're only talking about things like white privilege, and social justice, 
It's a little thing called critical race theory. They keep on jumping around. Even, even here in Clearwater at a very large Southern Baptist church, they're talking about white fragility, a book by Robin D'Angelo that is just absolutely dripping with critical race theory. In 2017, you would go, oh, no. <laughs> We're too smart for that, thank you very much. I'm a well-read man, I'm well-educated. I have a doctorate in thus and thus, or whatever it may be. 2023 you, take a break. Maybe go see a doctor. Go pray with your pastor. But brother, don't worry, I'll be praying for you. But thanks a lot, man, for the coffee, I appreciate it. That's what 2017 you would say to you. Because he doesn't ever understand that everything is being disrupted and dismantled in our world. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's not the, just the title of a movie. It's what the plan is. If you will, think of it as a sociological, ideological, economic blitzkrieg. You don't know where you can turn next. See, because this is a top-down, bottom-up, inside-out move. In everything. Top-down. You get your desired elected officials and directors into office or into the head of a company, an organization. Let's say like uh, Budweiser or into Disney. And you enact, legally enact change and radical change in the organization. Bottom up, you create reflexive events, precipitating events. You encourage them or you highlight them. Let's say like the death of somebody that was killed by police. And you show it again and again and again. You show that video to everybody in every bit of social media everywhere where no one can escape it. It's the only thing that you do. All of a sudden, you don't talk about COVID for a few weeks. You talk about one thing, and then you encourage people to burn down their own towns. You encourage people to riot in the streets. And the people that are at the center of this whole movement are going to be people that are avowed Marxists. Inside out. Then you reinforce the desired radical change in faith, cultural events, and community gatherings, in corporations. Everybody's gonna to have to go through training, diversity, equity, inclusion training. You're gonna to have to see how you don't understand your ethnicity has been really hurting people for a long time. It's called the Great Reset. And this is from the World Economic Forum. It's the way to change everything all at once. But the big change isn't even coming yet. The big change is in 2030, and we'll talk about that later. Well, in the cult Chinese Cultural Revolution, because we're talking about Maoism today, you had the old ideas, the old customs, the old culture, and the old habits. And all those things that were old had to be changed because you had to bring in the new, out with the old and in with the new. That was the program. So you had to go through a psychological transformation, a philosophical spiritual transformation, a cultural transformation, a political and governance transformation. Everything had to change everywhere. But not just what happened in China or what they tried to do in Hungary in 1919, which only lasted, I think, about seven or eight months. And they kicked everybody out. But you're going to have to do this through the whole world. So what is happening? What is happening to us? Well, let's think about industrial revolutions. And this is the excuse that they're going to give. The first industrial revolution, you had steam engines and steam power. That changed everything, right? Steam locomotives? All of a sudden, you're going to be able to go from one end of the continent to the other end of the continent. Mobility was changed as well. In, in the ability to start creating new things, everything started to change. And it also, unfortunately, led to the rise of socialism and communism. But second industrial revolution, the discovery of electricity and assembly line production, the leap of 60% of the Western world out of poverty. Think about that, what that did. Transportation connectivity from urban industrial areas, steam ships, all of a sudden you weren't having to rely upon sails anymore. On wind power, that wasn't the thing. You could go where you wanted to go with the ship. Watch out for the icebergs, but you could go where you wanted to go. If you think about it right now, what they're trying to talk about with everybody in this change for 2030 of net zero is they're trying to talk about, well, we need to get off of those gas turbine engines, those diesel engines that we have on ships, and we need to go back to wind. Do you see what they're doing? The third industrial revolution, the age of personal electronics and computers. Extreme poverty is now limited to just some countries that are far out that are not part of the systems that are ruled by dictators. City centers are emptied out and the rise of the suburbs is happening, happening. But really the big thing is electronics, the digital age, 
is introduced. Computers, home computers, then especially the smartphone, which is, of course, that's your little surveillance device. Can tell anybody where you are at all times. Every word that you say, every keystroke that you hit, every picture that you take, someone else has that. Just a little warning there. And then now we're coming into the fourth industrial revolution. That's what this is all about. The great reset is to basically cancel out everything that's happened before, and now we're gonna go into the fourth industrial revolution, starting with a global brain. Think about that for a second. We'll talk about that later, but don't forget global brain. The elimination of sovereign nations. Human employment is minimized. The rise of the creative class, because we're gonna to start to lose all of our jobs because robots are gonna be taking them over. The end of the analog policing. End of analog policing, the rise of the surveillance state, the change of dietary consumption, the end of private ownership, the beginning of the circular economy, the internet of things. And when I say the internet of things, I don't just talk about the internet that you're gonna be able to put your code in to make sure that you pick up something. We're talking about the internet is going to be able to read everything. Everything that is created will be then, of course, understood by what it's doing at all times anywhere, even if it breaks down, is that Someone will know that that's happening. So in, se in a sense, you're giving somebody somewhere sovereignty. The end of abundance, the abundance of our economy, and the beginning of scarcity. Because you are in the midst of a meta-system change. That's what's happening to you right now. To weaken the United States and Western nations and allow China to rise. Now understand, China will be rising because of the fact that they have a system that we've helped them to build, the technocratic state. Not purely communist Marxist anymore, but with fascistic tendencies. So the whole way that they've been able to encourage everybody to do this diminishing of the United States by the United States itself and the rise of China is through the concept called Thucydides' trap. And what is Thucydides' trap? Well, it's when one great power threatens to dis displace another. They would say that war's, war is almost the result but it doesn't have to be. You see, if you convince the folks that would say, no, we can't allow that evil system to rise, to accept that it needs to rise and diminishes itself so it doesn't go to war, where people don't try to actually preserve their freedom and their liberty from possibly becoming autonom automatons in the future, if you can convince them to, to basically dismantle themselves, that's what you want. And this comes from Thucydides who was the, the author of the history of the Peloponnesian War, which is back in 450 BC. He say, it stated, it was the rise of Athens and the fear that this instilled in Sparta that made war inevitable. So we gotta avoid a war. So what we have to do is actually commit Western civilizational suicide. That's what's happening to you right now. And you're just the little people. Others are making the good decisions for you. So China and its system will rise, and America and its system will be disassembled. And I hate to tell you this, but even Republicans are helping this along. It's what you call a neoconservative. Or sometimes people that are saying they're really conservative, way more than even those, those normal conservatives. Well, they're autocrats too. They're saying we need to get rid of the Constitution and the Declaration and all those sorts of things. And we need to basically create another autocratic state to beat wokeism. They're after the same thing too. Because China, China, because China and China's rise must be allowed to rise. So let's talk about the One Belt, One Road initiative. This is something that myself and my friends and my partners were aware of back in about 2009 to 2010. As a matter of fact, there was even talk of Kathy Kang, he'll be speaking next, about moving her possibly to Hong Kong or Singapore, or somewhere where she could help cre create travel opportunities and so forth and logistics for folks that are wanting to be a part of the One Belt, One Road initiative. Back then it was called the Spice Route or the Silk Route, the Silk Road Project. Well, it's the One Belt, One Road initiative. And what it is basically is that you have China neo-colonizing third world countries and second world countries all over the world. So they're coming into countries in Africa and they're saying, hey look, you don't have a good sewage system, you don't have good water systems, you don't have good roads, you don't have a good airport, you don't have good financial systems, you don't have a, a digital network right now for phones and everything else. You know what we'll do? We'll come in and we'll take care of all of it. Don't worry about paying us back just now, but just sign this memo of understanding. It's called debt diplomacy. 
Hundreds of countries have participated in this scheme. Not just in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, but even in South America. And now they're really trying to tickle the ears of the Caribbean as well. So this is an example of where they're trying to build their roads now. This is transportation logistics roads, but it's also a digital road because, see the thing is, data is the new oil. It's the new gold. Because if you have somebody's data, then you know everything about them. You can even create a digital you in a digital cloud that can know everything that you're doing because it knows all of your patterns of behavior. And it can give you a nudge sometimes about where it wants you to go in terms of your interaction with social media. Especially even, let's say in Europe, you have a land sea express route that's going to be starting in Hungary and going all the way through, your, through, through Athens in Greece. This is part of the plan. So even a guy that is supposedly conservative, like Viktor Orban, is a puppet of the Chinese government. So when you say he's conservative, no, it's a Potemkin village. All of his digital is controlled by China, his telecommunications network. You know, when, when it came to a vote in the EU about condemning Hong Kong, condemning China for taking over Hong Kong, the dissenting vote was Viktor Orban in Hungary. So the One Belt, One Road initiative creates a replacement system from what was established at Bretton Woods back at the end of World War II, where you would have US dollar dominance replaced now with BRICS dominance. So BRICS would be Brazil, India, China, South, South, um, South Africa, as well as Saudi Arabia is now talking about being a part of this. Iran is talking about being a part of this. Now Brazil is really pushing the other countries in South America to be a part of this. So the US dollar has been dominant. Well, now they're gonna phase out of that. US foreign policy dominance replaced by China-centric dominance. The United States is fractured, balkanized. Have you heard some of your politicians and even conservative ones talking about having a national divorce? Have you heard that? We need a national divorce. That's what that's all about. Capitalism replaced by various forms of socialism. Liberty and freedom replaced by autocratic authoritarianism. Humanity, human beings being replaced or transitioned into humanity 2.0. A sovereign God replaced by artificial intelligence. And by 2030, they will create heaven for you. That'll be downloading your consciousness into the cloud. And you can live there even if your body dies. They're going to be trying to convince you of this for the next seven years. Now, faith is an important factor in dismantling the United States because this isn't just about changing America. The fourth industrial revolution is about changing you. And we're about ready to go to our first movie here, folks. This is Klaus Schwab explaining what the Fourth Industrial Revolution is to Charlie Rose just a few years ago. He's the head of the World Economic Forum. Have you seen this Bond villain before? Okay, here we go. You now say that you want to talk about, in this year's uh, conference in January, mastering the Fourth Industrial Revolution. When we look at the world today, we see governments and even business very much engaged in mastering the crisis of today, um, very much absorbed by crisis management. Right. But if you look into the future, there is so much going on in technology. Yeah. It's a real revolution and uh, our life, the pattern of governing societies will be so much affected with what's going on yeah, yeah. in research, in innovation, and we are not sufficiently prepared for it. Just mm -hmm. look at the discussion on big data. Yeah. It shows how, how difficult it is to find the necessary rules, to find the necessary norms. And, and look at things like artificial intelligence. Exactly. And robots, look yeah. at things like um, gene editing. Exactly. You know, opening a whole new horizon. For medical science. And you see, the difference of this first uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing, it changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact on yeah. your identity. Yeah. And offer certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about. You know, yeah. when you began to. When you began to do that kind of gene editing, some people worried that you were changing what it means to be human. 
that's the problem. And yeah. uh, it, uh, of course, the new uh, industrial revolution offers us many opportunities, but it raises many fold questions on the ethical, but even legal yeah. uh, implications. And we have to be prepared for it. And that's what we want to do in Davos next year. Is that enough for you? This is the man who has gathered world leaders, has trained world leaders, both on the Democratic and Republican side, on the conservative and liberal side, progressive side, I should say, because most people that are actually truly classically liberal would be so offended by this talk because you're talking about taking away human autonomy. But this is where this is all going. So, but what does Klaus Schwab mean by changing you? You heard about gene editing, right? What else could he mean? This is Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum with one of the founders of Google. Advancing very fast. But can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains, and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel uh, how the people react um, to your answers. Uh, is it imaginable? Um, I, I think that is imaginable. I think... Um, Hesitation. <laughs> you said too much, Klaus. I, I think, you know, you can imagine that. You can imagine, well, you're going to be sort of transplanted into, you know, the, the internet, Ritual. so to speak, to live forever in a digital realm. Uh, you know, you can imagine that, you know, you just in your biological incarnation are going to live to be some, you know, very long age. Uh, so understand what I'm saying to you. Everything that I just talked to you about, I'm now explaining, I'm letting them explain this to you, what the plans are. Now understand, people sometimes make the, the mistake of saying this is a secular movement. Oh no. It's very religious. This is from H.G. Wells in 1928. He wrote the book, The Open Conspiracy. In other words, they're going to be out talking about these things, and you're not going to be paying attention. That was back before 2020, both of those two clips, but you weren't paying attention. I was running around. I was the 2023 you running around in 2017, and everybody thought I was a conspiracy theorist. Guess what? You know, now here we are. But this is what H.G. Wells says. He says, the character of the open conspiracy the movement towards a world collective, will now be plainly displayed. It will become a great world movement as widespread and evident as socialism or communism. It will largely have taken the place of these movements. It will be more. It will be a world religion. But you're saying to me, Mike, look, we are conservative Baptists. That wouldn't happen to us. Maybe some of you here are not Baptist or Presbyterian. That wouldn't happen to us. We have more discernment than that. Oh, no, you don't. Or you didn't at the time. See, when somebody gets fear into you, it short circuits everything in terms of your thinking. This is Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York. I want to point out something. If you take a look at the chain that she's wearing there, can you see what it says? Vaxxed. Because that's the new salvation. Vaccination is the new sacramental process if you're someone who is Roman Catholic. See, because in Roman Catholicism, you have initial justification, right? Well, that would be your first shot. But then you need your first booster and your second booster and so forth because it just isn't enough. You are creating a religion. That's what actually is happening. And I tried to warn people, and I, I know, and I, I, I love so many folks that, that you know, I come in contact with and just trying to tell them, please, don't give in to the fear. This is purposeful, but it is a faith-based religious movement. That's what happened. So just like you would say to someone, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven and hell? And if you would like to go to heaven, let me tell you why. That'd be of some way of sharing the gospel with people. But this it was, you know, if you were to get COVID today, would you die or would you live? You know, I can give you a way of salvation if you get vaxxed. And you don't believe me? Let me let Kathy Hochul tell you. We have to get this community back and 
what we went through this pandemic made us stronger. I believe that, especially when I talk to young people who weren't able to have their graduations from high school or a normal life for the last 18 months. I say to them, whatever comes your way in life, you are stronger, you are more resilient. God let you survive this pandemic because he wants you to do great things someday. He lets you live through this when so many other people did not. And that is also your responsibility. But how do we keep more people alive? We are not through this pandemic. I wished we were, but I prayed a lot to God during this time. And you know what? God did answer our prayers. He made the smartest men and women, the scientists, the doctors, the researchers, he made them come up with a vaccine. That is from God to us. And we must say, thank you, God, thank you. And I wear my vaccinated necklace all the time to say, I'm vaccinated. All of you, yes, I know you're vaccinated. You're the smart ones, but you know there's people out there who aren't listening to God and what God wants. You know this, you know who they are. I need you to be my apostles. I need you to go out and talk about it and say, we owe this to each other. We love each other. Jesus taught us to love one another. And how do you show that love, but to care about each other enough to say, please get vaccinated because I love you. I want you to live. I want our kids to be safe when they're in schools. I want you to be safe when you go to a doctor's office or to a hospital and are treated by somebody. You don't want to get the virus from them. You're already sick or you wouldn't be there. We have to solve this, my friends. I need every one of you. I need you to let them know that this is how we can get, fight, fight this pandemic, come back to normal, and then start talking about the real issues that we have to fighting systemic racial injustice, which exists today. And if there's a denier, I will take you on any date because I've seen it. I know it exists and we are not going to have a blind eye to this ever again any longer under my watch. And that is my commitment to you. Faith based. It's the way to, this was back in 2021. It's a faith based religious system based upon fear. That's what's coming at you all the time. The purpose is to disrupt and dismantle the United States, to make you controllable, to put you to a position of fear. And look, I understand. You know, unfortunately, I know people that are in this room right now that lost their jobs because they would not do it. I know some people that took the first jab and then they said, no, nope, we see there's something going on here. Thank God for you, and I'm glad you're still here with us. Next week, we will be at the White Coat Summit with America's frontline doctors and others, and Dr. Malone and Dr. McCullough and so forth, to talk about these issues. If you see what's happened, they've funneled a good portion of the world's population into destroying their businesses, destroying their nations, destroying their economies, making everybody fear one another, and as well as do something that's not in their best interests. That's what's happened. But see, after you disrupt and dismantle, then you can build back better. That's what the fourth industrial revolution is. That's what's been happening. Believe me, this is the darkest conversation that we're going to have, so <laughs> it does get better after this. But there is something I want you to do. This is about ending our nation. This is about ending our national sovereignty. This is about disrupting the Constitution of the United States, where you have individual rights. You have inalienable rights. That's what this is about. But there's a reason why we called our conference what we did. It's because it's time for us to take back America. We also need to take back the church. We need to take back our institutions. And it comes down not to just guys like me that are up here talking, it's you. We must protect and defend the United States of America and our Constitution from those that would seek to dismantle our nation. We must do this. Do you agree? Stand with me. Thank you.